Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. On June 13, 1944, the German Air Force began launching one of the first guided missiles in history. Radar on the English coast picks up the trail of a flying bomb headed toward London. Sudden silence indicates stoppage of the jet motor. The bomb goes into a dive. In the first four weeks of robot attacks, 2,752 persons were killed, 8,000 injured. In Britain, the flying bomb was commonly known as the doodle bug, or the buzz bomb, for the buzzing sound it made as it fell to earth. Listen to this flying bomb explode somewhere in southern England. The bomb was named the V-1 by the Germans for Vergeltungswaffe, or reprisal weapon. Soon V-1s were falling like lethal hailstones on England. In the first two weeks of the V-1 campaign, they came at an average of nearly 100 every 24 hours. At first I thought a regular plane was approaching, but I heard a sound like the sound of an outboard motor, and I looked up and saw a ball of yellow flame in the sky. I figured at once that it must be one of those rocket planes. This thing came almost overhead, and then I could see it. It looked at first like a real plane, but then I realized it was too small. Of course, it has wings on it. It has a bullet-shaped nose. It doesn't have any propeller. I'd say it's about 20 feet long with a wing sped span of about 15 feet. The only way to combat the V-1 was to shoot it out of the sky with anti-aircraft guns or fighter planes. The bomb's speed of 400 miles per hour made it a supremely difficult target. The flying bomb is formidable largely because of its speed. It not only flies faster than any bomber on an equal length of course, but it also flies direct. During an 80-day period, the buzz bomb damaged more than a million homes, killed over 6,000 people, and injured almost 18,000 more. Had it been developed earlier in the war, the V-1 could have altered the conflict's outcome. I'm Ed Hurley. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.